This has been going kind of viral on my side of the internet where this young lady called Bobby um, Althoff has just basically pissed off loads of established journalists in hip-hop and shit, right? Loads of black people in hip-hop have been pissed off that this little white girl has had the opportunity to... Um, interview drake laying down on a bed somewhere um in you know while he's on his tour um you know it was all a blur or something like that i forgot the name of the tour but he's on tour now doing good things and uh, this bobby girl managed to snag a 55 minute or so interview with with drake which i think was one of the better ones because you know her whole shtick is that she's kind of dry um there's a lot of flipping sarcasm going on there it's a bit of a funny interview it's not too serious no one's going to be asking you crazy shit about your baby mother or about beef and shit so it's a bit of a ha ha he he good time especially if you're on tour the last thing you want is to go into one of those kind of gotcha breakfast style breakfast club style interviews so i completely understand it but it's been funny to see the response from my american brothers and sisters over there right because i think they're not used to this because i think we have had a bit of practice in the uk with that girl called Amelia, who does Chicken Shop Date, who I've always hated. I've always hated that show. I thought that show was fucking pants. I've never watched one episode of it in my entire life. In the same way, I don't think I've ever listened to a fucking NTS show. I'm just not that guy. Um, everyone else enjoys it. Cool, do your thing, but it's just not for me. And the Amelia thing, when it comes to Chicken Shop Date, I just never understood it because the thing about the UK, which is probably different to like the States, or maybe it's the same over there, I'm not too sure. Most chicken shops, especially the ones that people kind of rave about, are in the hood or in the area ends they're in usually predominantly black neighborhoods poor neighborhoods right and usually a chicken shop is a marker of a poverty stricken neighborhood like if you have chicken shops and betting shops in your area more than likely the unemployment rate is super high crime is super high everyone's suffering and those places are usually like i wouldn't even call them safe havens but they're just cheap places to go and eat most of the day right they usually open crazy up maybe some of them are open like 24 hours which is fucking insane they're usually really cheap you can get like six wings and a drink for maybe 150 or two pound so if you don't have much money and wherever you're in ends and you want someone to go eat and chill whatever with your mates and stuff and hang out you can go there so for the most part the only people that you see in chicken shops are black and brown people usually in ends there might be a few white people here and there that are from ends that you might see but you won't see a white girl that looks like amelia in there so i never understood the stick i never got the premise of the show of having a really posh looking girl sit in a chicken shop because she wouldn't be seen dead in those places if she wasn't filming the show like and i would go as far as saying she probably didn't eat at one before she even done the show so i never got it so i thought to myself why don't just film the show in the studio that Amelia girl does a good job, clearly. People like to her show. It's very successful at the time. I think it still is. It's still on now, don't get me wrong. People love what she does. I don't understand why they could just do the show in the studio. It would have just done... It would have just worked just as well, personally. So I never really vibed with it because of that. And I kind of felt like... Not, not that I'm saying like fucking fried chicken belongs to black people. But it just felt a little bit patronizing. That's all. For me, personally, I just didn't like that thing. It just feel, didn't feel congruent. And I'm big on that. I'm big on congruency. Whatever you're into, just display it. Be flipping, you know, unapologetic about it. But let's not lie. Let's not try and make it out to be one thing when it's not the other thing, right? It's just not necessary. So, long story less long, I don't mind it when these whites come in and they do their own thing, but then they also invite the hip-hop world into it as well. Because I feel like, in general, a lot of hip-hop artists, especially the American ones, they get scummed with interviews. I feel like a lot of the platforms that are out there, they don't actually... Um, they're not there to kind of help, you know, signal boost the artist or give them a platform to kind of reach new people or to say their piece. They're usually there as kind of like weird gotcha type journalist platforms. If anything, they're just as bad as like TMZ. Because for the most part, these platforms just want to get the juicy gossip because most of them, that's what they kind of live off of, right? The You know, the Instagram pages like DJ Academics is one, the Shade Room, all these sort of places, they're not really there to you know to give you insight on the artist art you know approach to music they're not really there to really give you another side of them like in terms of a human they're just there to kind of be talking about the mess when it comes to baby mama drama beef um whatever else it may be so it makes sense why these artists are going to these other platforms to go and have interviews because no one wants to go and sit in a what hour and a half interview where you're having to fucking you feel like you're in an interrogation doesn't make any sense to me personally so i'm all for this bobby out of girl doing her thing and i even like the fact that she's becoming way more successful within a particular niche that hip-hop exists in because i feel like if anything a lot of these guys anyway and gals especially if they're 
No, if you've got someone that's like intrinsically tied to the streets, the last thing you want them to do is have a serious interview because you don't want them to incriminate themselves and end up getting in more trouble. I actually would prefer to see a guy or a gal that's got really deep street ties sit down with a Bobby out of and have a really, you know, or like a funny Marco and have a really funny off kilter sarcastic dry humor type of you know interview as opposed to sitting down with vlad or with charlemagne or with whoever else or academics and and be grilled about some drilling that one of their friends went on i don't want that so i'd rather them sit there so i'm all for this but the reaction online from people especially black side black twitter side of things has been very very strong they don't like it um, as you can see here from the screenshot, some person here t um, retweeted a clip that features Little Yatty now doing an interview with that Bobby Outtop girl. So I'm assuming maybe Little Yatty was the one that put Drake on because I think you know Drake and Little Yatty clearly have a, a close friendship and they're probably you know recommending stuff to each other and whatnot. Or maybe Drake knew about it anyway. Who knows? Either way, Little Yatty's got another interview with her coming up soon. And this person quote tweeted it, the clip of her and Little Yatty sitting down and said, "Can we get that hot dark skin Walmart girl?" To interview rappers instead actually i'll be down for i think that'd be actually a good interview to do i'm surprised they haven't done more of that um i think i don't know where she's from in america but there's this like cute black girl that basically goes to walmart and asks people really funny deadpan questions and stuff usually sexual but i think that would work another person quote tweeted and said why are there so many random white girls with monotone sarcastic personas interviewing rappers again like i said i think these rappers just prefer to sit down with people that aren't going to judge them and are just going to be a little bit fun and won't take the whole thing too seriously. And this is why they go there personally and they won't get into their fucking business. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, where this woman spawned from, another person says. Another person here says, I hate to be this nigger all the time, but man, I don't like that random white bitch can get these interviews, but there's black publications out there who guys like Drake and Yachty won't show love to. But that's the reason why, because I think most of those publications that Drake and Yachty won't show love to are usually the same publications that shit on them. That's the funny thing. The ones that, especially Drake, the ones that question Drake's blackness, the ones that question his you know, um, choices in women, the ones that question his hip hop authenticity, whatever it may be, they take a piss out of his accents and how he approaches collaborations are the same places that are now getting their cracking nose bent out of shape because Drake doesn't want to sit down with them. It's absolutely redacted, in my opinion. I think it's really, really redacted, really dumb, makes no sense. But again, what do I know when it comes to this stuff? What the hell do I bloody know?